When it comes to selecting the right memory kit for your PC, there are four criteria that you need to be aware of. The first is how much capacity do you need for your system? Chances are that 16 gigabytes is going to be the right answer unless you're doing high-end desktop work. 16 gigabytes is perfect for gaming, like Photoshop work, like video editing, and so on. 8 gigabytes you can get away with if you're doing more mundane office work. For example, Microsoft Office, a little bit of web browsing, and so on. The second thing is you need a dual or quad channel memory set. If you're running something like Threadripper or an Intel X299 platform, quad channel. If you're running Ryzen or a standard mainstream Intel setup, then dual channel it is. Very simple so far. Things get more complex though when dealing with memory frequency versus latencies. These two sets of memory are both by T-Force and this set of memory runs at 3600 megahertz. It is the Excalibur RGB. And as memory would imply, we have a nice RGB strip there. It looks very cool indeed. This set of memory is the T-Force Vulcan, and it runs at a slower clock speed. It runs at just 3000 megahertz. And you might be very tempted to say, well, this set of memory here is the better purchase. It runs at a higher frequency. Well, my name's Paul, and in this Red Gaming Silicon video, we're going to be demonstrating why you should not just look at the memory frequency, which is once again 3600 megahertz for this particular set of memory. You should also take into consideration the timings of the RAM as well. Before we go any further, do be aware that we were sent this stick of memory here for the purposes of review. This stick of memory, though, was actually not sent to us uh, directly by T-Force. It was actually part of this system that we're doing an independent review for uh, with Overclockers UK. So that's an entirely separate project. So it just so happens, ironically, that... Uh, this was the memory that they chose for this system. So it kind of works out rather well in this particular instance. Um, so without further ado, let's jump into it. So if we were to look at the timings of this memory, we have CL18202044, which is actually pretty darn loose. For a point of comparison, this team group uh, Vulcan memory, which once again is running much slower, has a CL of 16, and then we have 18, 18, 38 with the same voltage it's 1.35 volts so what we did for our test is very simple we ran a variety of different games at 1080p with the highest quality preset or we ran a variety of different synthetic benchmarks. We ran with an i7 8700K at five gigahertz. The rest of the system comprised an MSI Z390 Tomahawk and the GPU in question was an RTX 2080 gaming trio once again by MSI. So with all of that said, the only thing we did differently is uh, run this set of memory with XMP and then we ran this set of memory with XMP and well at once again at the 5 gigahertz mark for the CPU. So then let's go through some performance numbers and as we can see throughout of these results when you're using the stock XMP profile for the Excalibur RGB memory it consistently performs slower than its Vulcan brother. And the reason behind this, of course, is simply the looser timings. We have either situations where the Excalibur is almost as fast slash bordering on as fast, or just loses by quite a considerable margin. CPU Z in particular seems to get hammered by the looser timings and doesn't really seem to benefit from the higher clock frequencies here. So in this instance, it's very obvious that the looser timings of this memory are without question really hampering the performance of the RAM. Well, fortunately, if you're willing to tweak, you can, of course, go into the BIOS and you can start playing around with memory timings. Just as a quick reminder, 18, 20, 20, 44 are the memory timings for this. And then we have 16, 18, 18, 38 for this. Now, it didn't take too long at all to go into the BIOS of the motherboard, uh, which is the MSI Z390, although we also tried it on a BioStar board as well for the Ryzen platform. And of course, naturally, we changed the memory timings and it did work fine. Uh, 
and performance did improve. But there are a couple of problems. The first is that the frequencies that this memory is capable of seem kind of finickety. So you won't be able to drastically tighten the timings much more than what uh, I've mentioned here. You can certainly eke a little more out of them, but your mileage may vary. The second issue is that the subtiming of this memory is also extremely loose. And due to how this memory works and with the motherboards we've tested it with, the sub-timings do not change any when you are changing the primary timings. So what you have is to then go into the motherboard uh, BIOS and then to manually start changing each and every one of these settings to get the best possible performance out of the memory. So does that mean I'm giving this memory a hard pass? Well, at around the 180 mark, it is not the most expensive memory out there. So given that the RGB on this uh, set of memory it does look very cool. If you are that type of person who is willing to go into the BIOS, who is willing to really play around with the timings and mess around, then the memory does become better value. However, I struggle to recommend this RAM for the average person because quite frankly, most people just do not want to play around that much with the BIOS. They just want to set XMP, maybe mess around a little bit uh, with sub timings, and that's about it. Whereas this does require a lot more work. The good news is that memory prices are starting to come down recently. Whereas a couple of years ago, a year ago, they were just right in the stratosphere. And fortunately now they're a more reasonable price. Um, so with that said, if you are on a budget, uh, I would recommend either going with slower memory kit with tighter timings or just don't go with RGB. Uh, put the money into the best memory kit that you can and kind of go from there. Well, with all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, if you have, like, share, comment and subscribe and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.